Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Today, one of our moderators who goes by Aloha Trader, real name Austin, has a very cool video and daily recap for us today. It's on CLWT trade recap and it's his low float squeeze pattern and how to predict that and how he also traded it. And while today is just a preview, if you want to watch the full length video or any of our exclusive content and all of our videos in our video library, then sign up and become an MIC member. All right. Enjoy, guys. Hey, guys. Austin here. Back for another trade recap. Um, I got a good one to go over over CLWT. Much better than my last one. <laughs> my, my IMMP stubborn kind of loser. But this one was a good one and I want to go over it. But before I do, I want to say that I'm not licensed, I'm not registered, I'm not a financial advisor, and none of this should be taken as investment advice, even if it sounds like it. All right, so CL CLWT was a good um, good momentum sympathy runner that uh, we had today. You know, as far as I'm concerned, there was no there was no discernible news. I, I didn't trade it as if it had news. If it, if it was, I'd totally miss it, but I think there was no news. Um, and the only reason why it was up was because... It was a simp It was a low float sympathy. The the float on this was like Yahoo said, like nine hundred thousand shares, and that's really low. And, you know, anything less than ten is low. Anything less than five is real low. Anything less than one million is kind of like the, a nano float, super, super, super low. And that's the kind of stuff that can really get going. And the one that kind of fuel the, the stock that kind of fueled this one was Hunt. And if you guys remember, uh, I can bring it up here, Hunt. Yeah, it's a stock that kind of went from like 10 to 100 uh, very fast, very fa faster than Drives did. Uh, well, I guess Drives did it all day too, but the way this kind of happened, it seemed faster than Drives. But yeah, like this stock just kind of ignited the, the potential. Oh yeah, don't forget, small caps can go up again. And so we had this one, and then RBZ was the day after. RBZ was, was another super, super, super low float. Yeah, like went from like 5 to 35 or something like that, 7 to 35 just went nuts on you know just that low float uh, turning over the float over and over and over again and so today when we woke up when I woke up CLWT was gapping up like oh, at least over 100 percent and I tried to get locates on it but uh, I, I, I think I was too late they were all gone but I woke up a little bit late today but or late for everybody else you know like 2.45 2 2.30 in the morning 2.45 in the morning is late for me and I woke up around here, and it was already just cr cruising up here, seven seven fifty. And so let's let's dive in here. Uh, there was no news, and yeah, I knew I couldn't short it. So what the first thing I did, of course, was I looked at the daily chart, um, and I'm like, what levels are going to be important on this chart? What levels? And I looked over here, and I said, okay, eight fifty is clearly going to be a level, right? Eight fifty topped here topped here the two day um, two, uh, the two the two biggest days or I guess this is multiple days but the two biggest times the stock ran popped out at 850 so that's definitely an important level and then this day this day was also super important because it had volume this this volume day where it topped out at 640 that's an important level and this and one thing I want to go over about support and resistance levels like there are some people who are long here that are stuck that like want to sell the second the stock gets up there and that's a part of support and resistance too but in my opinion, support and resistance is huge on the psychological aspect. People look at the chart and people use the chart like like me, like a lot of other traders. A lot of traders use the chart, the daily chart and support and resistance levels as their, as their guidelines to go off. So there's a psychological aspect to the lines and support and resistance that is what, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy kind of makes it relevant, right? Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.